Right, so in this tutorial we're going to be talking about CAM software. Now in a nutshell, what's CAM software? Well, we can take a 3D file like this STL file, turn it into G-code, which we can then send to our OX CNC using Universal G-code Sender, or something alike, and cut out our 3D object. Now I'm going to give you two options, there's a free option and a paid option. We'll go over the free option first. So we're going to be using SketchUp and an extension for SketchUp called SketchUCam. This can be downloaded via a link in the video's description. Now you do have to sign up to the forums I download this from. However, there's no catch-22, they don't ask you for money or any trick questions and they certainly don't spam your inbox, well, at least I haven't been. So that should be all fine and dandy. So we're going to start up SketchUp and I'm going to show you how to install that extension. So we're going to click on Window, Preferences, click on Extensions, click on ex Install Extension, and then browse for wherever you've downloaded the sketchucam.rbz file. Select that, hit Open, and it'll ask you do you want to install. And then you'll be presented, let's delete this model, and then you'll be presented with a toolbar up here. So we're going to click on Fat Boys Parameters. So we've got a bit to go over in here. So this is all our options for milling with our machine. So some of these are going to be applicable to what type of CNC machine you're running. So the values I'll give in this video as a demonstration, just take with a pinch of salt because you will have to apply this to each individual machine. So let's go over these. We've got a little dialog box down the bottom just saying uh, what basically all these options do. Let's go over these in detail. So spindle speed, the RPM in which our motor on the Z-axis will turn at. I manually control this, um, so I'm gonna just put zero, but if you've got um, a motor controller, then you can, you can use the G-code to control the speed of the spindle. Feed rate, so this is millimeters per minute of travel for the X and Y axis. So basically this depends on the type of machine you're running and also the material you're cutting from. So I'm gonna give an example for the ox metal. So if I was cutting from wood or plastic, something between three, uh, sorry, two and 3,000 millimeters on the X and Y axis is fine. If I was milling, say, 60, 61 aluminum, um, which is you know, getting up there in hardness for what the ox metal can do, then obviously something like 1,000 to 1,500 is a better figure, but slower. Material thickness is obviously the thickness of the stock we're milling from. Inside, outside, overcut percentage, and we've got down there percentage of material thickness to cut. So I generally overcut um, my stock, and this is so that we get a clean edge on the bottom that's sitting on the bed, which is why we want a waste board, because we will be cutting into that. So something like 105% should be plenty. Bit diameter, obviously the diameter of the cutter we have on our spindle. Tab width, so if we're milling something which um, we don't want to break away from the stock, we're gonna need support tabs. So obviously here we can select how thick those tabs are gonna be. In this case, it's default six mil. 6 mil is fine for most applications. Safe Z travel. So basically when the um, Z axis has to move from one point on the stock to the other, this is the amount of room it'll rise the milling bit above the material and move over. So something like two or three millimeters is absolutely fine. On the safe length X and Y, we can put in our maximum travel limits this is applies to whatever machine you're running. I'm just going to put in, oops, wrong box. I'm just going to put in my safe travel limits there for my machine. Plunge rate. So generally, I match the plunge rate to the feed rate. So this is at what this is the plunge rate is applying to the Z axis, moving down, cutting in towards the stock. So as I mentioned, generally I match the plunge rate. However, if you were cutting something very hard, it might pay to slow down the plunge rate just to give the milling um, bit a little bit more time to cut away the material. We've also got an option to ramp in the Z. So 
think of it as if you're driving a car rather than falling off a cliff which would be your plunge rate because it's go, it's just moving the milling bit towards the stock vertically a ramp is obviously like driving your car down a ramp it's gently moving the z axis down towards the stock and moving x and y axis at the same time to aid the cutter milling so that is an option i have used i haven't found it necessarily in most applications but you can try that and obviously if you want to use ramp and z hit the check box and then also tell it how many um, degrees you want it to, to ramp in the z axis step over so step over is the percentage that the milling bit will pass over um, next to each other so if we had for instance 100 millimeters and our bit diameter is three millimeters we're going to get a very messy surface because we're not overlapping our passes so we do want to overlap them and something like 50 percent um, works m fine in most cases so this means that basically with a three millimeter bit each step over each pass will be overlapped one and a half millimeters tab depth so this is again talking about support tabs um, so we can select the percentage here so for instance if our material thickness is six millimeters and our tab depth is 50 obviously our tab depth is going to be three millimeters i generally find something around one or two millimeters works fine for me so after we've gone through all those settings we're going to hit ok and then we get this little box down here so this is our milling area so i'm going to, going to draw a really simple box and extrude that six millimeters so you're going to want to draw whatever you're trying to mill out inside this zone and then once you've done that we're going to hit this green arrow to generate the g-code and then it's going to ask us where we'd like to save the g-code and i'll save it to the desktop everything's successful and we can close sketch up and here's our g-code file so now let's talk about a paid application now full disclosure meshcam do not support the channel they've not paid for a review they've done absolutely nothing i'm just giving you an honest opinion about what i think so basically i've done a ton of research looking at all sorts of applications and there's always a catch the, the software is either poorly designed doesn't have all the options you realistically need or it goes into the other category of basically expecting you to be a machinist and run a very big expensive machine where the software is going to cost you thousands meshcam does bridge this gap it's cheap enough for the home gamer and it also offers a great variety of options and best of all there's a 14 day trial which i'm obviously running right here so that you can evaluate meshcam and see if you like it yourself so what i'm going to do is drag and drop my stl file into meshcam and it's going to ask us what sort of operation we want to run for this we're going to select three axis and you can see we've got our 3d object and we've also got a white box perimeter around the object so this is the white box represents the stock we're milling from and then obviously the yellow item is our object we're trying to mill out so we're going to go over these options so the first thing we're going to do is define the stock so obviously our stock should always be bigger than what we're trying to mill out so let's pretend i was milling this out of uh, a bit of plastic that was 300 by 100 millimeters and was four millimeters thick so you can see there the white perimeter jumps out um, to fit the size that we've just defined our stock with so define supports so here we can add supports um, so unfortunately for most of the world that uses metric this is the one option in mesh cam that they need to change to metric there is no option i've found it's an in inches so i'll just put uh, whatever whatever the heck one tenth of an inch is and we'll go 0.3 um, and this is our support height and width of course 
vertical position so whether we want it on the top of the geometry middle or bottom I always select the bottom of the geometry and now we're going to select by left clicking where we want the supports once we've done that we're going to hit done and if I scroll down you can see there that's what our tabs going to look like um, that's going to support our material stop it breaking away um, retract heights this is the safe travel on the z-axis hit three millimeters is a good value to use um, home position so in sketch you cam we only had one option for home and that was this corner however in mesh cam we got we can choose any corner or any midpoint or whatever I generally select the middle hit OK and you can see here we've got our X Y and Z axis um, in the center of our operation set max depth so this is the maximum depth the material the sorry the maximum depth the milling bit will pass through the material so we're using four millimeter thick uh, stock in this case so I want it to travel 4.2 millimeters so that we get a clean edge so the next option is set machining region now I've actually never used this because it's a bit redundant for the type of stuff I do but let's go over what it does so basically we can select where to machine so if we only wanted to mill out half a battering for whatever reason we could do that um, so you can see we've got a purple box now that it's only going to machine out this part it's going to completely ignore this part I obviously don't want that so we're going to go clear all so that we're going to mill out the whole part so our last option is to generate the tool path and it has a host of options in here and thank goodness that we've got the option to use inch or millimeters so we've got tolerance I'd generally leave that at the default 0.25 um, machining margin so this is basically always got to be the diameter or thicker than the milling bit you're using so in this case we'll use a six millimeter bit so that's our machining margin um, enable arc fitting I'll leave that ticked enable rough passing leave that ticked select tool so here we can add tools or select uh, ones that are default it's only got one when you install it so here we can select ball mill end mill etc um, so we'll go end mill and go overall length we'll just make up a bunch of numbers here 10 millimeters shaft diameter six flute six flute length five um, we'll go feed rate 2000 plunge rate 2000 step over um, three millimeters depth per pass 0.2 and hit ok and now we've got that tool there so i'm going to select that hit done it's going to ask you would you like to um, import the default tool path parameters for the selected tool that's fine um, so we've got depth per pass two millimeters and uh, step over three so this is all the settings I just uh, generated for the tool of course we can change these if we want stock to leave so basically we can run two passes with this we can run a roughing pass which quickly removes the material but looks messy and then a finishing pass later if we want to tidy up the surface so this is how much material it would leave for the finishing pass to remove so something like a tenth of a millimeter works pretty good for me so now let's move on to a finishing pass options now in most cases just doing a roughing pass is just fine however if you want a really smooth surface or really clean we can enable a finishing pass and this gives us the options to cut along just the x-axis the y-axis or the x and y-axis obviously this is going to take the most amount of time to finish however that's also going to give us a pretty clean surface we've also got waterline and pencil both of these I actually haven't played around with so I'm not going to give my opinions on those but uh, the X and Y axis I definitely have used and it gives a pretty smooth surface so here we can select a different tool to use for the finishing pass obviously the only catch for this is we've got to manually change out the tool ourselves 
Um, so we can select a different tool. I'll just select the same tool for saving time. Hit yes, and then we've got basically the same options. Step over, feed rate, plunge rate, same as before. Um, so for the moment, to speed things up, I'm just gonna disable the finishing pass and hit OK. And now it's gonna generate the, um, the movements the machine will make to mill out our battering. And once it's done, this is what it looks like. So we've got basically a bunch of green lines which indicate how the tool is going to be moved across our stock to mill out the battering. So provided it all looks okay to you, um, we can select Save Toolpath. Um, we can also select uh, Estimate Machining Time. Um, estimate Cutting Time 20 minutes. Note, Estimated Time does not account for acceleration, tool change, etc. Generally, uh, it's no criticism of the manufacturer, but generally this is way off by sometimes as much as I've had parts estimated 15 minutes and it's taken an hour and a half. So don't go by that too much. It is hard to estimate, so it's not a criticism. Um, save toolpath now. And here we can select a whole bunch of options of how to save the G-code. But for universal G-code sender, we can just select basics g-code millimeters arc and we're going to save that to the desktop and i'll just put bat g-code and then we'll save that and here's our g-code we just created so let's give a quick look in universal g-code sender at how we would send this g-code so we would go to file mode browse we would select the G-code we just created, hit open, and we can also hit visualize so that we get a, another perspective of how the um, operation is going to take place, and this yellow rod represents the machining bit. So that about wraps it up for CAM software. I hope you're a few steps closer now to getting your first parts milled out on your CNC mill. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.